it's 2017 and there are women at the top of politics and industry all over the world. But surprisingly, in India, millions of women are dropping out of the workplace. Figures reveal that nearly 20 million Indian women quit work in the last decade. The majority of women quitting work are aged between 15 and 24. And whilst women were leaving, over 24 million men joined the Indian workforce in the past 10 years. So what is going on? Well, to explore the issue, I'm joined by Cherie Blair, barrister and founder of the Cherie Blair Foundation, which works to empower women entrepreneurs in developing and emerging economies, including India. And Ranjana Kumari also joins us from Delhi. She's director of the Social Center for Social Research and someone who's passionate about women's rights. Thanks, both of you, for joining me today. Uh, Cherie, you've just come back from India. I have, yes. Your, your foundation works a lot there. What are you finding? And can you explain this bizarre drop in women working? Well, I think part of the explanation is a good one, which is that more girls are staying on in school. And therefore, instead of going into the workplace, they are uh, being educated. That counts for 30% of the figure. So that's something that is, is positive. The problem is that educating girls at school and then to university and then not enabling them to use the skills that they've learned to go into the workforce is obviously uh, not just a personal uh, tragedy for the girls themselves, but also a, a real uh, dampener on India's economic progress because the more women come into the workforce, the more they can contribute and the more the economy can grow. And Ranjana Kumari, if I can just bring you in, in Delhi, you've, you've worked on this issue for many years. What do you think is the main problem is, or is it quite diverse? Well, as you know that 10% yeah, women have uh, really gone out of the workforce uh, and uh, work participation rate has gone down by 10% in India. So it's really, uh, you know, there are multiple reasons. One, of course, is that majority of the women are in the informal sector labor force. And also the formal economy has become more technology oriented and there's more, uh, you know, stronger skills that you need skills you need to join those. Uh, after liberalization, there was a kind of growth spurt in women joining the new economy. But then to uh, build their capacity to s sustain themselves in the labor market and also to be able to continue to get more employment uh, in labor market has not happened. As a result, a lot of women have really not been able to s stay there. And secondly, also that, you know, there is, uh, though there is not much evidence-based uh, data that we uh, may, uh, at the moment, be able to produce, we are doing the research to find out that there's a growing, uh, you know, scare in terms of uh, violence against women in public places. There have been many, many incidents where women have been targeted when they came from workplaces or they were going to workplaces. And this is really ha has happened in last decade. Uh, there's okay. a growth in these kind of violence. So perhaps, perhaps there is a reason that, uh, you know, there is a, there, there is a bigger dropout because of social pull factor. Right, okay. Well, Shree, I know your foundation works a lot with technology. It's something that you're personally interested in, isn't it? But it's something that perhaps women are less keen on than men. Well, I think that's just social conditioning, if you like. I think if you give women the tools to use technology, they use it very well. For example, uh, in our mentoring platform, we have 250 mentees from India and 150 mentors from India. They're all using the technology because it's a global platform and it's based on the internet. And a number of those women are actually in technology businesses. So women, if they have the chance, the problem is women, particularly poorer women, don't get equal access to technology. So way back in 2010, my foundation commissioned a report with the GSMA which showed that women did not get equal access to mobile phones. And, and even just recently, uh, leaders in Gujarat saying don't let single women have a mobile phone because that may allow them to make choices that perhaps their parents don't want them to make. And then if you go to the internet and look at the access to the internet, the poor don't get access to the internet. Women are disproportionately represented in the poorest of the, of the world. And if we could get women to get better access to the internet, then they would also have more opportunities. But women can and do use technology. And the women that we work with use it very well. I think another thing about women 
is that they tend to employ other women. So that's why we're very keen to build up women entrepreneurs because we find the women entrepreneurs we work with actually tend to then provide jobs for women. Because what's interesting in India, for example, is that you know this is not an, an Asian thing, if you like. If you compare women graduates from India's participation in the market with women from Bangladesh who got graduate qualifications, it's double. The Bangladeshi women are going more in, into employment. Or look at Indonesia, the Indonesian women, um, even more so. So this is not something inherent in, in women. This is about the social and the, the pressures and the assumptions about women. And, and indeed, it is definitely also about the, the concerns about protection for women that, that, that make a, that that make a difference. difference. Um, Ranjana... I mean, women and family is incredible. The role of women in, in supporting the family in India is culturally very important. Is there not a risk that we sort of undervalue that? Because, you know, who looks after the children? Who looks after the, the, uh, the aging parents? If all the women are pushed out into the workforce, it, it is very specific to India, isn't it? That, that value on family. Well, I, I do agree with you that uh, value uh, for uh, sustaining the family in India is very important and uh, family as a social institution is very core to Indian society, but that does not mean that women should not get the equal access and opportunity to get into the job market after education and also the problem with the new economy and after the growth uh, that uh, we, we have witnessed that the one income is not enough to sustain family's standards that people are looking for. So certainly two income is important and that is why the women have to go and work and uh, also when women are going and working then we, we did a study on women managers and we have realized that because of the social pull factors they are they are not able to go for promotion because they'll be transferred this their children are studying and the shared livelihood uh, shared family is not the idea that has been still institutionalized in India where both men and women are equally contributing to family one more point that I agree with Miss Blair that you know women are when getting uh, trained and when getting access to technology use they are doing phenomenally well and that is what happened with the new economy but at the same time women are just only 27% on the use of uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter all kinds of internet based uh, services which can promote their enterprise if they are getting into small businesses self-employment but they are really not getting that kind of access at the moment so really even in the technological revolution that we are witnessing with cyber uh, revolution women are getting left behind not only that education skill but also now with the use of cyberspace they could promote themselves but they're getting left behind so okay. I do think there is need for a very serious intervention family is important but access to work uh, and also you know the equal access to work is equally important okay Ranjana Kamari I know you've had a big day today because you've been pushing more access for women to Parliament as well thanks very much we're going to leave the India part of our discussion there for now but very good to speak to you there live in Delhi well Sheree